Do you have data in existing Power BI semantic models, but don't know how to connect to that data using Microsoft Fabric? Well, in this video, we are going to be talking one lake integration for Power BI semantic models. Now, to start out, let's talk about what one lake integration actually is. This is not a tool that will magically convert your Power BI semantic models into fabric semantic models, unfortunately. However, what this will do for you is allow you to connect to the data you have in that Power BI semantic model right inside of Fabric, which would then allow you to continue to use Fabric and its many features, but with your existing Power BI semantic model data. This is a very simple report. It has one visual here. First key point to understand about one lake integration is if I'm going to go through this process, the tables inside of my Power BI semantic model must be import mode. Direct query is not going to work here for us. Has to be in import mode. Now, that being said, I'm connecting to an Azure SQL database. I'm pulling some data back and I have it here displayed in a report. Count of sales order ID by a product name. Now, the important thing here is after you have this report saved, as of course you probably do, because this is going to be something that's already existing. If we want to push this up into the Fabric environment, then we're going to need to publish just like we would any other time working with Power BI. So I'm going to save my changes and it's going to ask me for a workspace. Now, next point, if you are going to use one lake integration here, you are going to need to publish this to a Fabric enabled workspace. That means that the capacity being used inside of that workspace must either be premium, a Fabric capacity, or a Fabric free trial capacity. I have a workspace set up here, so I will find it. Power BI to Fabric, and I'm gonna select this. This is going to publish this up to my Fabric workspace. This will finish up here in just a moment, and then we're gonna jump over to the Fabric service. All right, so it was successful. I'm gonna select got it, and then I'm gonna open up Fabric. I am now here inside of my Power BI to Fabric workspace in my Fabric environment. Key point, again, if I go to workspace settings and I select my license info, just remember, this is only going to work if you have that fabric enabled workspace. So I'm working right now on a fabric capacity, so I know I'm good to go. My goal is that I have this product sales lake house, and I want to connect to some of my product sales data from that report that we were just looking at. The thing about this is if I already have the report in the semantic model existing, could I connect my lake house to the source data inside of my Azure SQL database? Well, I absolutely could do that. But there's certain circumstances where we might want to use what we've already built. And that is our circumstance for today. You can see here that I have a report and I have my semantic model. The first step in this process, after we have published our report and semantic model inside of this workspace, is to enable one lake integration. To do this, I'm going to hover over my semantic model and select the three little dots. Then I'm going to select settings. Here I can see all of the settings I have for this semantic model. Remember, this is a Power BI semantic model. And I'm gonna select the dropdown for one lake integration. I'm gonna select this little toggle on and then select apply. Then let's go back over to my workspace. My next step is to refresh my semantic model. Whether that's on a schedule or manually, we have to complete that step before we can get to actually connecting to this data inside of our lake house. So I'm going to hover over my semantic model and hit the refresh button. This will take just a moment to finish up and I'll see you whenever it's finished. Now my refresh has finished and now we are ready to use product sales lake house to connect to this data in our Power BI semantic model. But let's talk about what exactly is going on behind the scenes. Well, remember, that one lake, as powerful as a tool as it is, it is based off of Delta Parquet, a common data format. Now that said, remember that our Power BI report, our semantic model, it has to be using import mode. And what that means for us is with the data that we have in that semantic model, behind the scenes, this feature is going to export the import mode tables as Delta tables and place them inside of one lake giving us access to those delta tables 
inside of a lake house or elsewhere in fabric as long as we have access. Now remember and keep in mind, in your Power BI report, the data that is coming in continually will still be in import mode. So the report will continue to function as normal in that regard. And every time the report is refreshed, then that means the delta tables will also be refreshed, meaning they will be refreshed here inside of your lake house, for example, where we're about to connect. If you're listening to all of this and you're thinking to yourself, Delta Parquet, one lake, lake house, I'm not too familiar with all of these items, then do check out on our on-demand learning platform, our course, One Lake and Lake House, where Manuel will guide you through the basics on what is the One Lake and what is the Lake House. Now that said, let's go ahead and open up our product sales Lake House. Now that I'm inside my Lake House, I'm gonna select the ellipsis and we're gonna create a new shortcut. We can create a shortcut because remember, those import mode tables from that semantic model have been exported as delta tables and placed inside of the one lake. So I can connect to Microsoft one lake and I see my product sales count semantic model right here, ready for me to connect to. So I'll select it and then select next. Then I can select a drop down for tables. And this is going to allow me to see the tables that I want to connect to, which are going to be production product and sales order detail. I'll connect to both of these and then select next. I'm gonna rename these here as well to product and sales order detail. Now, if I was working with a lake house with schemas enabled, I could have used those schemas there as well and added those schemas into my lake house here if I would like. But for this video, we're using a normal lake house without schemas enabled. Now that I have those renamed, I'm gonna to select to create this shortcut. And you'll see here in just a moment, now I have my product and my sales order detail table here inside of my lake house. This is a very powerful tool, y'all, that I hope you found some use in after watching this video. But a few things to remember. Number one, there are some limitations to this feature. I'll make sure to link down below to Microsoft documentation that will list those out in detail for you. Also, does this mean that you should immediately connect to all of your reports and enable one lake integration that's probably not what you want to do this is a wonderful and powerful tool if you need to use it now that said what happened behind the scenes was we had our report we had our power bi semantic model those tables were using import mode they were exported as delta tables and placed here inside of one lake which allowed us to connect to them inside of our lake house you're still going to have your report. You're still going to need to refresh that report and the data will still be in import mode there inside of Power BI. However, the good news is that as that report is refreshed and the data is updated, so will your Delta tables that were created from the Power BI semantic model tables. And that means the data that we have inside of this lake house will also be updated. If you'd like to learn more about Power BI and Fabric, then check out our most recent Learn with the Nerds where we dive into both. Speaking of which, let me know down in the comments if you wanna learn more about how Fabric and Power BI work together. I would love to hear from you and I'll make sure to take a look at those comments and talk with you down below. All right, y'all, that is gonna be it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.